When you got on that 70s show, all of a sudden you're getting the caliber of woman. I would love to bang Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> you were in a serious relationship with her. Right. And the rumor was you dumped her for Ashley Simpson. Right, they're called the kissing bandit. Who are you, yeah. who are you supposedly kissing? Actually, he's 24 and I'm 17, so nothing could ever happen anyway. Uh -huh. And he's like a big brother to me. Like, he's like one of my best friends. Who is he? He's the guy from the 70s show, Wilmer Valderrama. Uh huh. There's a story about you making out with Wilmer from that 70s show. You still seeing the guy from the 70s show? You're not like dating or anything? <laughs> that means yes. No, I'm J Jay, it's not legal. Really. Let's get him thrown in jail. What do I care? <laughs> How old is he? He's 35. He was like, oh, slow down. <laughs> You're too young. And well, you so, are too young. It, not anymore. So you'll be 18 in a month. No, he's, we're good friends. I'm 17, he's 24. What can really go on there? Nothing. <laughs> Probably took her virginity. Did Our story about the 70s actually begins in the year of 1998. Fox's programming department was casting for an all-new period piece sitcom centered around the 70s, appropriately titled That 70s Show. Now, if you're into the dark side of Hollywood like Jake and I, that TV show title probably sent chills down your spine and for good reason. While there's a lot going on on the Masterson front, Jake and I are here to expose an entirely different vein of That 70s Show iceberg. See, back in the 90s when That 70s Show was first airing, it hit off to such great successes that the That 70s Show cast would be catapulted into an unprecedented limelight. The show was an obsession and had a strong cult following, thus giving the actors portraying these characters a lot of power in Hollywood. Some would be innocent, some would be victimized, but many would turn very dark and operate as if their treasure trove of lies, deceit, and abuses would never be checked. This brings us to today's topic, Wilmer Valderrama. Jake and I are huge coffee lovers, whether it's cold brew, dark roast, blonde roast, espresso, we love it all. That's why we are super excited about the sponsor for this episode of Deep Dive, Trade Coffee. I am by no means a coffee expert, so when it comes to craft coffee, I wouldn't have even known where to start. Their matching algorithm curates coffee perfect for you. Then coffees from the country's top 55 plus roasters are sent right to your doorstep. You can try craft coffee from indie brands that you wouldn't typically find in the grocery aisle. Plus the coffee beans are roasted within 48 hours of being shipped, making the coffee you receive extra fresh. And fresh coffee is better coffee. This month, we received Fee Milk and Honey Blend, which was roasted in Redding, California. It's a medium dark roast that was super chocolatey and rich. We also were sent Clatch Columbia Coffee for Peace in Sweet and Smooth. This medium roast comes out of Rancho Cucamonga, California. It was actually very interesting and different because it has like a citrusy flavor to it, which was really refreshing. We love that Trade Coffee subscription plan is so customizable. You can cancel anytime, choose how often your coffee is delivered, plus the shipping is free. To start your subscription today, be sure to click our special link in the description box and you will be sent a free bag of coffee with any subscription. Thank you Trade Coffee for sponsoring today's video. Now grab your coffee and let's dive into the twisted past of Wilmer Valderrama. Back in 1998, a 19-year-old boy by the name of Wilmer Valderrama would get his start alongside stars like Ashton Kutcher, Danny Masterson, and Mila Kunis on the hit That 70s Show. Before even reaching his 20s, Wilmer would be catapulted to superstardom, where for the next couple of years, he would be transformed into a certified teen heartthrob. I was in between my junior and my senior year before I got The 70s Show. I got The 70s Show between those two years of high school and and um, imagine having your own sitcom and coming back to, you know, to your senior year of high school. It's definitely quite remarkable, you know? His face was everywhere, quickly becoming a highly recognizable fixture of Hollywood. And on one fateful day in the year 2000, during promotion for that 70s show, Wilmer Valderrama would wander into the hallway of the teen magazine Elle's headquarters. There, he would bump into the latest star of 1999, Mandy Moore. Mandy was only 15 years old at the time and Wilmer was 19 years old. Now this marks the start of a very problematic pattern of Wilmer's that only gets progressively worse through the years. Very quickly after, around the time that Mandy Moore turned 16 years old, he started dating the global superstar. For roughly two years, Wilmer would date Mandy more publicly, but in 2002, right before Mandy was even of legal age, they broke up. 
This is where the story turns hurtful and violating. See, years later in 2006, Wilmer would go on the Howard Stern Show. Now, this is just the first of many Howard Stern clips that we're going to be showing in this episode. However, this is one of the worst. As Wilmer would brag about taking a young Mandy Moore's virginity to the entire world. You dated who I think is a real hot piece of You dated Mandy Moore. Yeah. For you Mandy Moore. <laughs> What's that like? So wait a second, Mandy Moore. Next time you see Mandy Moore naked, how much time do you have to put in with a chick like that before you get to start banging her? Do you have to put in months of time? No, well, see, we were each other's first loves, you know what I mean? Oh. Like, that's, that's, that's like an hour. She was a virgin. She was a virgin? You took her virginity? Dude. Did it hurt? Does it, did it I, hurt? Never, I, no, I never took All a girl's virginity. Night. Yeah. Like, to burst through that hymen is hard, right? Look, I, I'll... Oh. <laughs> that that shit. Singing Thomas Hyman. I, I, I will say this: it is not like warm apple pie. Let's see how do we, how do I put this in the most political way possible? It's just really good. In an interview with Elle magazine, Mandy would address Wilmer's comments. She deemed them utterly tacky, not even true, and it hurt her because she liked him and she thought they were friends. The infamous Howard Stern interview would be discussed in articles for years. And when it was Mandy Moore's turn to go on the Howard Stern show more than a decade later, she finally had the opportunity to address it. Vilder, Vilmer. Wilmer. Right. Yeah. He came on the show and said, oh, I, you know, I think he was caught up in the moment. He was caught up in the moment. Uh, you comfortable talking about yes, that? Yes, yeah, yeah. sir. He let's said, do it. Yeah. He said, uh, I he took, took my virginity. He took your virginity. And he did not. He did not. He did not. Oh. I dated him when I was 16 and 17. No. I met him at a photo shoot for like some teen magazine, literally, when and, I was 15. 15. And you were pretty innocent. I was. Again, yeah. like never French kissed a boy. He was like my first real true boyfriend. Right. Yeah. But he did not take your virginity. He did not. That had to be. I love him and I still love him and he's a very good friend. And that's why I was so shocked by it because not only was it a fib, but it was so unlike him. It was so uncharacteristic. I've never seen him since. I didn't know him. <laughs> I, I was just talking to him, asking sure, him questions. Of course. And he's dated all the ladies. And he has quite a dating yeah, history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know if I have the story right, but I think he called up and said, Could you guys not air that anymore? Aww. You know, and I mean, he felt real bad about yeah. it because I guess you weren't the only one who gave him a call after that interview. I'm sure. I oh wasn't. my God. Can you imagine? Were you beside yourself? Yes. We, and you were hurt. Very. Do you pick up the phone and call him and say, hey, yes. tall. Well, yeah. first of all, you didn't take my virginity. Yeah. And I remember in the moment he like tried to explain it away that sort of he did get caught up and like right. he maybe insinuated more than actually like outright said it. And I was like, no, you, you outright said it. Mandy is still friends with Wilmer after all of this. A sort of resolved ending, I guess. But the same can't be said for the subject of our next chapter. See, directly after Mandy Moore, Wilmer would date a young Ash Simpson. We don't know Ashley's exact age around the time that they dated, but it would have been 18-ish. This relationship wouldn't last long, but it would be cause for a huge feud in the next chapter that Wilmer, Ashley Simpson, and Lindsay Lohan were never expecting. Now, back to the timeline. Only two years after his relationship with Mandy Moore, in 2004, Wilmer Valderrama would date actress, songstress, and icon, Lindsay Lohan. So, we all know who Lindsay Lohan is, right? Paris is a cut. What? <gasps> Lindsay Paris is a what? Blockbuster hits such as Parent Trap, Mean Girls, and Lindsay's Club, she has been gracing our screens since she was a young child, truly becoming one of the most recognizable actresses from this generation. Like I said, the year was 2004. Lindsay Lohan was at the pinnacle of her career. She had just finished Mean Girls and was working on the classic Herbie Fully Loaded with the Weinstein Company. The dark tendrils of Hollywood were looking to hook a young Lindsay Lohan at every turn, as she was truly vulnerable. Her dad and her's relationship was crumbling. Her eating disorder was beginning to unfold in front of the public eye, and Lindsay was working harder than she ever had before. When she wasn't working, Lindsay was out partying at the club with all her friends. She was famous, but alone. 
this was all blast on the highest scale possible through the tabloid circuit. Thus, everyone was able to read the intimate details of the inner workings of Lindsay's struggles. And these struggles were music to Wilmer Valderrama's ears. At only 17 years old, Lindsay Lohan was spotted kissing a 24-year-old Wilmer Valderrama. Wilmer wouldn't let Lindsay's young age stop him but they did hide their relationship in private. When grilled about the relationship by Ryan Seacrest and confronted with photos literally kissing Wilmer, Lindsay would completely deny her relationship with a 24-year-old man. Chillingly, Lindsay would also cite their age gap, saying he's much too old for her and just an older brother. How old are you? I'm 17. 17, 18. so this is high school for you right now, essentially. In more some ways, I'm done with high school. <laughs> but more or less, I mean, this is like right now in your life, it just happened. You're, you're popping up everywhere on the cover of uh, Us Weekly, ladies and gentlemen. Take a look at this shot. Oh, yeah, Teens Gone Wild. Look who's in the middle. Lindsay in the middle. So, you know, I'm obsessed with these magazines. I already read the article. Why? Why do you read that? Oh, I love the crap. pictures of you guys getting coffee. <laughs> There's a story about uh, you making out with Wilmer from that 70s show at a place in LA, a Hollywood hotspot called Avalon. Is there any truth? Ooh. <laughs> any truth to that rumor? No, he's, we're good friends. I'm 17, he's 24. What can really go on there? Nothing. I he's, hope not. he's, he's like an older brother to me, so right. yeah. It's, well, what about silly. these stories about you being out and uh, dancing a little, on a little tables? Wild. Like, it's, well, these are clubs where you got to be 21. Okay. They wrote that probably like after I had like the premiere night, like I was out with everyone from the cast and they just find literally it's like anything you do, it, it sells. So obviously they're going to write about it. And it's like I get a call from like my publicist. They've been tracking you for three months. So you better watch what you do. I'm like, I'm 17. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I have my younger sister who then reads this and says, are you kissing a boy? That's gross. Who's 10 years old. This would spark an anti Wilmer press tour that would last the mid part of 2004. Lindsay would go interview to interview, explaining how he's just like her older brother. Again, this is coming from the girl who made out with her mom. Yeah, y'all, I don't know. Maybe I'll get into that over on Secret Society someday. Comment below. Anyway, US Weekly was reporting 17-year-old Lindsay as the kissing bandit. Where is it? It's in the US Weekly that right there called you the kissing bandit. Who are you, yeah. who are you supposedly kissing? Uh, th actually, he's 24 and I'm 17, so nothing could ever happen anyway. Uh -huh. And he's like a big brother to me. Like he's like one of my best friends. Well, Who is he? He's the guy from the 70s show, Wilmer Valderrama. Uh huh. Yeah, but so then there was somebody so else silly. they said too. The other guy. Who's that? The guy from MTV. Like we had a party after the premiere. Of Damien. Girls in New what's York. his name? Yeah, Damien Fahey. And uh -huh. um, like we had a bunch of people there. My brother was there. A bunch of people were at this place, Suede in New York, and they said that I was kissing him. And so it's like it's and so you weren't. silly. No. <laughs> Isn't that so frustrating? Like, if you're whispering to someone, they're like, oh, they're dating. Right. So it's just, you can't really get around it. You just accept it and kind of move on. But isn't it frustrating that there's not one ounce of truth in some of those things? I mean, some of them, but yeah. some of them, there's nothing, and then there's just a whole story. It's kind of depressing, because, like, my friends in high school that, like, I don't get to talk to every day and see every day may believe some of this stuff. Uh-huh. So, you just have to laugh about it. Right. On. Um, we, we have to take a break and we'll come back. But Lindsay vehemently denied the relationship. Months and months would pass, and Lindsay's 18th birthday would quickly encroach. This is when Lindsay Lohan would dangle the truth in front of the entire world. I hear you like the party, is that true? <laughs> I'm 17, I think it's normal for 17. I'm gonna be 18 in less than a month. Yeah, it's oh, fun okay. to go out. <laughs> and are you still seeing the guy from the 70s show? We're friends. Oh, we're oh, oh, friends. You're not like dating or anything? <laughs> that means yes. No, I'm J Jay, it's not legal. He's oh. 24. Let's get 17. him thrown in jail. What do I care? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're very good friends. Very he's good a dear friend. friend to me. Okay. I care for him very much. So you'll be 18 in a month. So he just. I'll come back on the show when I'm 18. We'll see where things are at with everything. Yeah, that'll be perfect, actually. I'd... Well, never mind about my mind. But anyway. <laughs> this put America on the edge of their seats. Lindsay was teasing a very sketchy relationship with an adult man, and she would be 18 in days. Now, Wilmer denied the claims that they waited to announce their relationship because of how young Lindsay was. He said instead he waited because it was more special that way, whatever that means. Now, if we take the manicured PR story that Lindsay's team was pushing at face value, well, at the very least, this relationship would progress at the speed of light. 
Now, often in problematic age gap relationships, everything moves really, really fast. And before anyone could blink, sickeningly, a young teen Lindsay was already living with Wilmer. Now, remember, Lindsay was still only a teenager when she dated Wilmer, but that didn't stop him from going into every grotesque detail of his life with a then teenaged Lindsay Lohan. When you're dating Lindsay Lohan, her dad is in jail now, right? Right. Like, did she, did, do you get involved in all that family stuff? No, well, you know, when we were dating, you know, she was going through some tough times and I was there for it, you know. Nice. I, um, did you ever I, do um, blow with the father? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, I never saw any of that. Now, let me ask you something. When Lindsay starts getting real skinny, is that when you bailed out of the relationship? No, no, she, no, no. To was be she, honest, was that she happened. anorexic or what? Did you that, catch her vomiting? She, she lost weight, <clears throat> yeah. you know, after we broke up, like way after, you know. Oh. <clears throat> but so you I, got um, her when she was really hot with the big boobs. <laughs> Well, I guess if you're gonna put it that way, I guess yeah. yes. But, but no, that she was, you know, you know, when I, when I, you know, when we met, she was this, you know, this bombshell. You know, she was Jessica right. Rabbit. You know what I mean? Yeah. She did was you, Jessica did, did Rabbit. Did you have to deal with the, the the father, the crazy father? You know, I I dealt with some of their family stuff, you know, but yeah. I was I was actually very happy to be there for them, you know, and uh, you know, both of both of them had interesting points, you know, each one of them had an argument. And does she and have I, red I, hair down there? Um. No fire, in, fire no. in the hole? No, no. no fire in the hole? Ain't that <laughs> really? So the red is fake hair? No, no, no. Red, red is red, but there's no... No red no, down there. Nothing. No, there's no... She never the, kept any of it around. Oh, there's no said. hair. Ooh. Right. Bastard. Come I want to smell your fingers right now. <laughs> Wilmer would even go as far as to call in a few favors and get Lindsay a guest spot on That 70s Show, where her character was written to fall in love with Fez which is Wilmer's character. But right before Lindsay could film her cameo, like literally the same time in October of 2004, much like Britney Spears on How I Met Your Mother, Lindsay Lohan was hospitalized. However, not for the same reason. See, at the time, the public was first beginning to speculate on Lindsay's eating disorder. Now, this would turn into a media frenzy. However, at this time, Lindsay said the hospitalization was due to overworking herself. And while this was partially true, only two years later, in 2006, Lindsay would provide a lot of clarity on the entire situation. In a way, only Lindsay Lohan could do. She admitted that the rumors were all true. Back in 2004, she was struggling with a severe eating Order. A then 17-year-old Lindsay would skip meals and have bulimic episodes very frequently. In regards to the 2004 hospitalization, Lindsay said, I started to get really bad head pains. I was shaking in my trailer. I got a fever of 102, and they were like, you need to go to the hospital. Lindsay instead went back to Wilmer's house and was laying down in his bed. She said in the middle of the night, her head pains were so bad, she started screaming and throwing things. At the time, Lindsay Lohan had a swollen liver and a kidney infection. Her body was so weak, she had to use a walker to even be able to get to the bathroom. Lindsay admitted in the same article that at this time in 2004, she was partying a lot. And since her career was at an all-time peak, she only slept a measly two hours a day, thus bringing her to the hospital bed that she was currently residing at. Lindsay didn't know if her health would ever recuperate, but because she was so addicted to her lifestyle, and I mean in every way, like work, partying, movies, premieres, her overage adult man boyfriend, I mean the list goes on. But Lindsay, and seemingly Lindsay's team, wanted her to get back to work at any cost. Thus, Lindsay only spent six days in the hospital before she was released and swiftly brought to the set of That 70s Show. Even though she had clocked out for six days, the Hollywood machine happily engulfed Lindsay Lohan back inside, seemingly indefinitely. And she made her mark on That 70s Show, fawning over an adult, Wilmer's character, Fez. Now, directly after filming, while Lindsay was shooting the hit movie Herbie Fully Loaded, reports and sources close to both Wilmer and Lindsay began flooding the Hollywood rumors mill, with stories that both Lindsay and Wilmer had officially called it off entirely. Lindsay later revealed that during November of 2004, her and Wilmer broke up but were sickeningly still living together. The day after the breakup, Lindsay wrote the song over and recorded it as loud as she could inside of Wilmer's house, because y'all, they were still living together. Now our next guest who starred in such films as Freaky Friday and Mean Girls. Now she's taken on the music world with her debut album, Speak. Please welcome back Lindsay Lohan. That's great, that's probably why I'm not singing right yeah. now. <laughs> well, obviously. <laughs>
<laughs> but seriously, I mean, did you sing for a while and I just didn't know that? I didn't really do much promotion for it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love music. Music's a huge part of my life, mm -hmm. just in general. Um, even when I'm on set, like, I'll listen to songs that kind of, like, help the character of the scene. Right. Me into, um, but that, I was really nervous that day, I remember. Really? Well, you, you came off really good. That was a very really emotional good. song. It was like about my dad. Oh, no, I'd just broken up with someone. Who? Well. <laughs> Do you remember who? <laughs> no. Apparently, I have a there's list so of many people. of them guys. I know. I hear there's a list going around of all of them. actually. Yeah. yeah. What, there's what? It was Wilmer Valderrama. It was Wilmer? It was, yeah. And did it break your heart? Was that? I was really upset, yeah. And that song I'd written right like the day after. And we were still living together. I sang in his house. Wow. Just tortured him, just recording the song so loud in his house. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And I was filming Herbie at the same time. That was there was a lot going on. Well, really you've busy. always had a lot going on. Thus, marking an end to the disgusting and problematic relationship between Wilmer and Lindsay. According to the public narrative Lindsay and Wilmer pushed, their relationship lasted six months, from May through November of the year 2004. However, in a major slip up on Howard Stern, when asked how long they were together, Wilmer said a year or something. When you got on that 70s show, all of a sudden you're getting the caliber of woman all of us would love. I would love to bang Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> I he would. probably took her virginity. Did he f <laughs> Yeah. Did he goes, yeah. Lohan? Yeah. <laughs> what do you, why insulting the man? He was, how many years you were going <laughs> out with Lindsay uh, we, were, we were together for like a, like a year and something. But you don't mean her. So how long were Lindsay and Wilmer secretly together before that first time they were spotted in May? That may just forever remain a mystery. But one thing that wouldn't be kept a mystery was Wilmer's rumored new budding romance with pop punk phenomenon Ashley Simpson the very next year. Now, this would turn into multiple physical altercations between Lindsay and Ashley's sister Jessica Simpson. Which y'all, we already released an entire video on her, so death go check that out but needless to say i'm gonna let shelby break down this mess play by play because it is a lot so Lindsay and wilmer were officially over by december of 2004 but soon after the new year in 2005 rumors were swirling around ashley simpson and wilmer creating a hollywood scandal now a snapshot of ashley's career in 2005 shows her reality show which was actually a spinoff from newlyweds her sister's show Ashley Simpson documented the making of her iconic hit record autobiography on her show. This album was the largest debut of any female artist in 2004, with hit songs like La La and Pieces of Me. Ashley was experiencing the height of her Hollywood stardom, and that's when the rumors hit gossip magazines that Wilmer and Ashley were an official couple. After seeing and hearing about these rumors, Lindsay was heartbroken and immediately went after Ashley Simpson, telling the entire world that Ashley stole her boyfriend. Now these Ashley and Wilmer rumors really did seem to just be rumors, as Ashley and Wilmer both denied dating after he broke up with Lindsay. But if you remember earlier in this video, Wilmer did date Ashley Simpson, but that was back when she was still a teenager. In fact, Wilmer even went into detail about his intimate relations with Ashley Simpson on The Howard Stern Show. And the rumor was you dumped her for Ashley Simpson. I know, which is the most hysterical awesome. thing ever, because you f Ashley Simpson? <laughs> Is that true? You you had sex with her too, huh? Um, well, if you put it that way, I mean, yeah, well, that's well, oh you know. God. Look, it's so funny, like. Oh you are a stud. It was a little louder than that. No kidding. It was a little louder than that. And you know, it's so funny. Uh, I did it actually like years ago and she and I just became best friends and then you know when Lindsay I and I broke up I finger up her ass. Oh, she, yeah. what, she, wouldn't even, she wouldn't even know what hit her, these young girls. her She wouldn't know what to like do that. with it She wouldn't even know what to do <laughs> Three knuckles but, deep Three knuckles deep That's right And then when Lindsay and I broke up you know she's one of my best friends and and uh, we started talking Whatever and, No no and, and, <laughs> Blah seriously, blah blah, blah. You know, seriously, you know, And, and then all of a sudden shame. the tablet started taking it out of content like we were dating Now even though that Ashley and Wilmer both denied getting back to together, Lindsay Lohan was still very angry and she would get her very publicized revenge. It was 2005, one of the biggest nights in Hollywood, MTV's Movie Awards. Everyone from Ray Carey to Hillary and Haley Duff would walk the red carpet, perform, and have all worthy moments. At the center of this was of course Lindsay Lohan. This was the hugest year ever for Lindsay's career and she won big. However, just when everyone thought the festivities were over, they had really just begun. As the prom queen of the MTV Movie Awards, aka Lindsay Lohan, was of course hosting a huge after party. 
Everyone who's anyone would line up outside the club to see if their name was on the list, including last week's deep dive subject, Jessica Simpson, alongside her sister, Ashley Simpson. But when Lindsay learned of their arrival, she told the doorman that he could not let them in, reportedly saying, no way, they are not coming to my party. Lindsay, who was still feeling betrayed by Ashley, laid down the law, and Jessica Simpson was reportedly furious. The Simpson sisters stormed out and left for Jimmy Fallon's after party at the Argyle Hotel instead. Well, apparently at this party, Jessica was going off about Lindsay in every way imaginable, even threatening to quote, kick Lindsay's ass. News in Hollywood travels like insanely fast, and Lindsay heard the rumors of what Jessica was saying about her at Jimmy Fallon's after party. So she left her very own party to go confront Jessica. Lindsay has always been bold and able to hold her own. We've seen that in her many Hollywood feuds. And with all this going on, it's made Duff a prime target for fellow teen titan Lindsay Lohan. Now the girls dish on the feud. When I heard that Lindsay was going to be on Saturday Night Live, I knew she was going to make fun of me. You might also know me from the pages of Us Weekly as the girl who's always fighting with Hillary Duff. I wasn't honored. I don't think it's an honor to be made fun of on Saturday Night Live. Our whole feud is so yesterday. <laughs> so yesterday. So we didn't do anything derogatory towards her. I'm not here to talk bad about her like she talks bad about me all the time. And um, I just knew that it was going to happen. I'm sorry if she felt offended, but I thought things were cool. So, I, Hillary, I don't want to start anything again. Or when she called Paris C word. She's an excellent actress, and those abilities work both on and off the screen. So, Lindsay walks into this party, and according to onlookers via the New York Post, Jessica on site lunges at Lindsay Lohan, scuffling about in the middle of the dance floor at the Argyle Hotel in front of every single A-lister. The spat drew so much attention that security had to be called over to separate Jessica and Lindsay from actually clawing each other's eyes out. Now this fight ends very bizarrely in a nice little PR package. Apparently they worked everything out. It was just a simple communication error and Ashley and Jessica's names were mistakenly misplaced from the list. However, all wasn't what it seemed as this wouldn't be the final time Jessica and Lindsay had a public like cat fight. Ashley Simpson did not involve herself in the after party fighting. She instead used her singing abilities to chime in, as a few months later in September of 2005, Ashley Simpson released a single titled Boyfriend, and it was rumored to be a diss track on Lindsay Lohan. The song is all about how Ashley didn't steal Lindsay's boyfriend and how Lindsay has been spreading a false narrative. At the time of the song's release, Ashley would completely deny that the song was about Lindsay Lohan. However, years later, Ashley would reveal to Andy Cohen that the song was absolutely about Lindsay Lohan. In your 2005 song, Boyfriend, there were rumors that the lyrics, I didn't steal your boyfriend, um, that that lyric was allegedly about you not stealing Wilmer Valderrama from <laughs> Lindsay I Lohan. I think I know the answer. Is that true? And how would you characterize your relationship with Lindsay? Um, yeah, I mean, I hung out with him first, and I wasn't interested in him at that point. So you did. So it was. It was. It was. It was. So, the best, so, so I didn't steal your boyfriend. That was about you not stealing him from Lindsay Lohan. I didn't. Yes. I, I was done. But all, all love here. Now, if you thought that's where the Simpson sister feud ends, it doesn't. After an entire year of tense award shows, Hollywood parties, and run-ins at BOA, in April of 2006, Jessica and Lindsay would get into a head-to-head -head SmackDown once again. This time, the altercation would take place at the Dime. In early 2000s, LA nightlife staple. Jessica was allegedly at a table with Hollywood director Brett Ratner when Lindsay Lohan sent a round of drinks over to their table. They drank the drinks and were laughing, having a good time. Lindsay was reportedly furious that neither Jessica or Brett acknowledged her or said thank you for the drinks. So she walked right over to their table and pulled up a chair. One of Jessica's friends reportedly called Lindsay a bitch and allegedly someone had to immediately restrain Lindsay Lohan because she was ready to fly across that table. While being restrained, Lindsay was was apparently hurling insults over at Jessica. Now, both of their publicists say that nothing happened and Lindsay just amicably sent over a round of drinks. The feud seemingly raged on and never had a proper conclusion. And this is all over one man who has a nasty habit of dating teen girls when they're down and out. That brings us to the most shocking and one of the final victims of Wilmer Valderrama, Demi Lovato. 
Nearly four years would pass and an all new generation of celebrities would descend upon Hollywood from the machine that is the Disney Channel, pumping out star after star, triple threat after triple threat, transforming young child stars into pop phenomenons. At the end of this golden era came a young girl from Texas who started on Barney named Demi Lovato. Demi's voice was so powerful and her comedic timing so clever that the Disney Channel just had to have her. And her career completely exploded from there. Platinum album after platinum album. But to build her legacy came many hardships. And one of the main ones in the form of an adult, Wilmer Valderrama preying on her as a teenager. Now, 11 days after the kickoff of the new decade, a 17-year-old Demi Lovato would hear about a census PSA. After hearing who else was starring in it, she heard the name Wilmer and she knew she had to go. See, Demi was just a young teen, but she had a huge crush on Wilmer, and Demi said it was love at first sight. Theo, I don't understand. We spent like over an hour in my class talking about what the census can do for our community. Refunding, representation, Education? This is a really, really big deal. This only happens once every 10 years. So first of all, Jasmine, do me a favor. Just don't believe everything they teach you in school, okay? Because first of all, number one, Christopher Columbus did not discover America. I'm just gonna leave because nobody here wants to talk about anything real. Whoa, wait, wait, nothing real. This is gonna affect my generation's future. Jasmine, totally get that, but obviously everyone here is smarter than I am. Your wisdom is over here. Now, after this PSA, there would actually be another one for the Chilean earthquakes. And Demi's manager sent her the job. She saw Wilmer's name on the call sheet, so she signed up again. I'm Demi Lovato for the American Red Cross. This time, however, things reportedly got romantic between a then 17-year-old Demi Lovato and 29-year-old Wilmer Valderrama. Now, at this time, Demi was dating lead singer of the Jonas Brothers, Joe Jonas. And we don't know the exact date of the breakup, but what we do know is Demi and Joe confirmed their breakup around May of 2010. If the reports are indeed Indeed accurate, Demi and Wilmer began dating immediately after Demi and Joe broke up. That would have made Demi 17 when she actually started dating Wilmer. However, Demi took a page out of Lindsay Lohan's playbook and denied dating Wilmer until she was 18, saying Wilmer was detested that she came on to him. He said, quote, get away from me because she was 17, so they had to wait until she was 18. Demi turned 18 years old in August of 2010. And just like clockwork, according to reports, Wilmer and her became boyfriend and girlfriend in November. Again, similarly, Demi would make headlines that very same month for needing to go to rehab during the international leg of her tour, where she was still touring with her ex and Camp Rock co-star Joe Jonas. Again, Demi is only a teenager at this time, and she's already going to rehab. Now, if this story sounds like at this point it's been copied and pasted three times in this video, that's because this is Wilmer Valderrama's playbook. Lindsay, Demi, Ashley, and Mandy were ambiguously underaged or just teens when they met an adult Wilmer in his 20s. Much like Lindsay too, it was right before Demi's 18th birthday, whilst she was struggling with substance abuse and an eating disorder. And even more eerily similar, they would still wait until the star was of age to announce the relationship. This was the Wilmer Valderrama playbook. So Demi entered treatment in November of 2010. That's when a bunch of reports about her and Wilmer began populating the grocery store checkout aisle. Wilmer's representatives denied the relationship entirely, and for two months, the public would speculate on the couple. It isn't until January 2011, after Demi fully completed rehab, that their relationship was made official publicly. By June of 2011, reports began swirling that the couple was breaking up. Not because of the problematic age gap, but because they were in different places in their lives, which is funny to me because that just sounds like an age gap, like they're at different places. Anyway, in November of 2011, the rumor mill would kick back up. When Wilmer and Demi attended a wedding together and were even spotted kissing, this would mark the beginning of a five-year on-again, off-again relationship between Demi and Wilmer. The next year, they would break up again, and Wilmer would date Minka Kelly. 
However, this relationship was very short-lived, and Wilmer immediately got back together with Demi. For the next three years, they would get together and break up multiple times. But in 2014, they would deny breaking up and would say they're still happily together, creating a new narrative for their relationship. This same year, Wilmer's Twitter slash X was hacked, and nude photos of Demi and Wilmer together in bed were leaked. Now, this is when Demi would go full force with her relationship with Wilmer, platforming him multiple times as her boyfriend, and even putting him in one of her music videos. You've recently become much more open about your relationship with Wilmer Valderrama. What sparked this change? And that's something I think that fans of yours, I certainly noticed it. All of a sudden, you were much more open on social media with pictures of you two together. You're super cute together. <laughs> and, uh, you know, anyone can see that you guys are clearly, clearly in love. But then you have that moment of, oh, I kind of forgot got they were dating because you, yeah. you took your relationship out of the spotlight. Were those conscious right. decisions to pull back and then say, okay, I'll Definitely. share this. So for for us, um, we wanted to keep our private lives private and we still do. Um, but as we've been in a relationship, you know, on and off for about almost five years now. So um, as time has gone on, people are seeing us more together and we thought you know what if you know if paparazzi gets us then whatever but we're in control of what we're able to post online so we're very open about our relationship and i don't know i think as you as i get older and i get more serious in my life um i just am you know more proud and i don't know you should be yeah no i i am i'm very proud but i also wanted to give him a lot of credit that he never takes and like people, he'll never take credit for a lot of my sobriety and my recovery, but I guarantee it, I wouldn't be alive without him today. I mean, you guys have been close for how many, how long now? We've been, I met him five years ago and we became close after that. I really, um, I looked at him and was like extremely attracted to him. And yeah, me I too. always, it, who isn't? Yeah, I mean, you know, no matter what you like, you just go, that guy's good. When I first met him, I, I'm not shy to dating older men. He was like, um, whoa, slow down. You're too young. And well, you so, are too young. You, not anymore. <laughs> I love it. She is defensive. Not anymore. Not anymore. I'm 20-something. I am 22. How old is he? He's 35. Oh, God, he's my age. Well, you said you knew him You're before I was... not 35. Oh, I'm, I see what you did there. I'm 40, but I mean... <laughs> I'm 35. I'm basically 30. Yeah, you're basically 30. Anyway, so you, you but you, we're you're basically in, the same age. Yes, I agree with that. You, but you're in sync. You guys are in sync, and that's yeah. what you recognize, Definitely, right? Definitely. Yeah. Because I know that throughout the years, when we've done different work together, whether it be television or here, like he's been there. You know, he's he's mm -hmm. been like rock solid for you. Yeah, I love that. He's been incredible. For a long time, you didn't really speak publicly about you and Demi, and more recently, yeah. you kind of have. Yeah, no, I think a lot of it, a lot of it had to do with the fact that you know it was uh, it was a big transitional time for her in her career. Yeah, and you know how it is because sometimes when people get to talk about relationships, you know they they, they stop talking about the things that you yeah. work so <laughs> yeah. hard about. Yeah. You know what I mean? that, so especially the, between the two of you, the type of attention I think it sometimes is fun for the fans, you know, and and it's a lot of fun for them. But but it, it could get a little tricky when it comes to promoting stuff that, that you care about. Yeah, and how long have you been together? It's been a long time. Well, when we've been I mean friends. we've been best friends for you know five years now and uh and uh, we were you friends first yeah yeah it just it was platonic first. yeah for sure i mean well i mean i'm you know i think she, she told you a little bit of that because i think I saw, I saw you guys this interview and <clears throat> i wanted nothing to do with her <laughs> demi lovato was experiencing a new renaissance with cool for the summer and her edgy pop image was being carved out for the next two years demi would work harder than she ever had before and she would achieve stardom she only dreamed of however wilmer wasn't fitting into that story in 2016, Demi and Wilmer officially split, and their relationship would reportedly turn into a, quote, big brother, little sister dynamic. I don't know, y'all. That's what the article says. It's gross. Demi would go on to co-own a rehab facility, but things would quickly spiral for her, and she would document all of this in her documentaries, only ever singing Wilmer's praises, saying he has a positive influence on her and she appreciates his friendship throughout the years. But it wasn't until Demi was turning 29 years old, the age that Wilmer had so happily scooped her up and made her his girlfriend as a young teenager. That's when Demi realized that the relationship dynamic with Wilmer, it wasn't a healthy one. 
This is a very common occurrence. Like when people turn the age of their abusers, they often begin to question everything, wondering how in the world someone as old as 29 or 30 was preying on a teenager. Demi would express all her feelings in a song on her album Holy Few called 29. Now, initially when the song dropped, the media would hound Demi about her relationship with Wilmer and question her on the contents of the song, begging for any morsel of context. However, Demi said the song speaks for itself, never actually speaking on Wilmer. And I think it's important to note that at this time, Wilmer was making posts with Demi's manager, the disgraced Scooter Braun. And Wilmer was calling Scooter, Demi's manager, his dear friend. So Demi kept her cards close to her chest and let the song speak for itself. That is, until one week ago. Demi Lovato would return to where Wilmer built it all back in the early 2000s, The Howard Stern Show. She basically said her phase of dating older men was due to the issues that are now resolved. I can say with confidence that my daddy issues aren't anything that are inside of me anymore. And I think there's a few signs to that, you know, like I'm with a partner that is my age, essentially. Right. Um, I look back on, on the past and, you know, think that's gross. On the age gap, she said, quote, I think that when you're in those developmental years, you should absolutely not be with someone that is older than you by that much. It's just unhealthy and toxic. And actually, funny enough, Ashley Simpson and Demi Lovato would both unite for a remix of La La and La La Land for all of their fans. As for Wilmer, he was one of Hollywood's most notorious playboys, with his very public controversial age gap relationships that he flaunted in the media, from a young budding star named Mandy Moore to the legend Ashley Simpson, to icon Lindsay Lohan and even one of the most talented voices of our generation, Demi Lovato. Wilmer's path of utter destruction through young Hollywood is undeniable, leaving every ex-girlfriend into a spiral some still haven't fully made it out of. Wilmer today is with his wife, and they still have a 12-year age gap, and his fellow castmates of the show he blew up on are being exposed. The clock is ticking, and it's only a matter of time before the sickening truth of the story of Wilmer is fully revealed. Until then, this has been Deep Dive. Be sure to subscribe for more, and we will see you all later. Bye!